someday I'm going to learn how to use this mic, but I'm, I'm getting better. So I'll be your last reflector, and um, I couldn't help but uh, make it a little bit sermony. So um, I guess seminary is starting to get under my skin a little bit. <laughs> so wow, I survived wow. Not only that, all of us survived wow. Nobody got sick, nobody cried, nobody threw up. That was my biggest fear, so all was good. Um, but one thing I did find out about myself when I was at WOW is that I can neither whip nor nay-nay. Um, which, for people that are older than me, that's a dance. And I quickly learned that I can do neither one of them, no matter how much I tried. And I did. Thankfully, my own child wasn't there to be totally embarrassed by me, so um, it all worked out. But, um, so that's one of those things that I think, well, maybe I'll work on my dancing skills for next year. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. Part of that metamorphosis we're talking about. But seriously, um, I was changed. Not my dance skills, maybe, but I was changed, like, like Barb was changed by the illusionist, I was changed by the poet that was at WOW. And I gotta tell you, first starters, I hate poetry. I have always hated poetry. I don't get it. I feel like everybody knows what poems are about but me. And I thought, when I heard we were having a poet, I thought, oh, jeez. You know, I, I'm just not going to understand this. I'm going to feel stupid. It's going to be, you know, high school English all over again. But I was quite surprised when I heard um, our poet, his name is Dale Fre Fredrickson, um, recite some of his poems. I was deeply moved by, by many of them. And I'd like to share the one that, that moved me the most. It's called The Doubters. The bro I'm sorry, yeah, the doubters, the broken, and the happy. It says, you are for the doubters, the broken, the happy. You meet us in the asking, seeking, and knocking. You are present in our darkest valleys. You know that we've all experienced doubt, despair, disbelief, disruption. In all things, you give us resurrection surprising newness, compelling love. You are the God of resurrection, breathing new life, creating fresh realities, resurrection in everything, infinite possibilities, and open-ended mysteries in our lives, our families, our communities. You are for the doubters, the broken, the happy. You meet the skeptics in their mathematical formulations. You blow our minds with quantum physics. You stir the solar system and galaxies while we ponder the stars. You see the shattered in their pain. You show us your scars. Leading us into your loving arms. You share your life, tears and blood and pain and strife. You meet the delighted ones. You laugh with us as we break the pinata, throw the confetti, open another box of Girl Scout cookies. We contemplate your beauty, blooms on a tree that become cherries and tangerines and peaches. You draw us into deeper discipleship. You are for the doubters, the broken, the happy. You surprise us with resurrection in all things. Huge exploding stars that make planet Earth possible. Tiny newborns, first breath and little cry. Caterpillars turn into butterflies. Widows find love again. Orphans find a family. Strangers are embraced. Prisoners treated compassionately. Clean water for the thirsty. The powerful serve the vulnerable. The suicidal find help, a future, a purpose. Shelter for the homeless, home-cooked meals for the hungry. Broken marriages are renewed. The addicted find freedom. The anxious find peace. The frightened 
find courage. The lonely find community. And all because of you, the one from heaven, from Bethlehem, house of bread, from Egypt's mystery, from dusty Nazareth, from Galilee, you are the Christ Messiah King. You leaned hard into the hell of crucifixion, unleashed the power of love, set a new world into motion. In everything resurrection, pinatas, butterflies, unchained lives, spinning galaxies, fresh fruit, new life. You surprise us with resurrection in all things, and we ache for the resurrections yet to be. We know they will be because you are for the doubters, the broken, the happy. And in such a small number of words, Dave gives us the reason for our faith, hope in resurrection. And not only in not only was Christ resurrected, but we, through Christ, are resurrected too. And I'm not talking about what happens to us after we die, but what happens to us right here, right now, because of our belief, our faith, our God, our living resurrection. Almost each line in this poem conjures up big images for me. You meet us in the asking, seeking, and knocking, he says. Who in this room hasn't asked hasn't questioned, hasn't wondered if God will answer our pleas. Yet God does exactly that. God meets us there in the middle of our doubt, in our brokenness, in our messiness, and in our happiness too. If we stop momentarily sometimes to take in God's love for us and God's everlasting goodness, we see that God provides an infinite array of possibilities for us. Another few lines that get to me from the poem, he says, Orphans find families, strangers are embraced, prisoners treated compassionately, clean water for the thirsty. Clean water for the thirsty. Now this poem was written in 2013, long before anybody knew about the horrific situation in Flint, Michigan, where residents have been drinking and bathing and, and cooking with tainted water holding dangerous toxic lead. The children that have been consuming this water will face alarming consequences. And it's unthinkable to me that families in the United States are facing this situation. Clean water for the thirsty. How many times does the Bible mention the cleansing power of water? Lots. In baptism, through water and the Holy Spirit, we are cleansed of our sin. And the Bible doesn't just say clean, I mean, the Bible doesn't just say water in all these places. It says clean water, cleansing water. Because even back then, people knew that water must be clean to do its work. But how is our society going to cleanse its sin of classism and racism by choosing to worship the holy ledger of cost-cutting? But we are people of God, the people of the resurrection. And we are forever changed by Jesus the Christ. And we must work for ways to bring that hope of resurrection to everyone. And what does this resurrection look like? Well, we can be proud that our United Methodist Connection has responded to this water crisis and has already given $10,000 towards finding filter getting filtration pitchers and bottled water to the people in Flint. And this, my friend, is what resurrection looks like. This is metamorphosis. As people of the resurrection, we know the power of God and the power that God gives us to alter futures. With God, we experience all of it. The pinatas, the butterflies, the unchained lives, the spinning galaxies, the fresh fruit, and new life. And we can feel the peace within, knowing that God loves all of us, the doubters, the broken, and the happy. Will you please pray with me? Most gracious and holy God, we come to you this morning as people of the resurrection, as people forever changed by your Son, Jesus the Christ, in gladness, sadness, brokenness, knowing that you are with us in all of it. 
Please listen to our prayers of praise and needs this morning. <laughs> 